Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I get lots and lots of comments from you viewers how to wire these DC double pole isolators for your solar systems. We're getting to the stage now where we need to be talking about fitting all the equipment in the van and this is a question that I get asked a lot because when you open up these boxes they are quite confusing. So I thought a short dedicated video on these particular switches would be really useful to all of you out there doing your own vans. So firstly, why would you need a switch on your solar panels? Well, it's really good practice for most appliances or piece of equipment in your van to have a means of isolation. If you want to work on that system uh, or you've got a fault and you want to diagnose, you really need an easy means of disconnection rather than having to unscrew cables or you know pull ring terminals off of batteries and so forth if you can just turn a switch and kill that circuit that's by far the easiest way to do it and particularly with solar panels because when they're in the daylight they're going to be generating electricity all the time and the only way you can turn that off is with an isolating switch or disconnecting the cables so switch is just by far the most convenient way to do that so let's get it on the bench, unbox it, and then I'll run through it with you. Okay, so here's the switch that I've ordered, and there's a couple of things initially to look out for when you're purchasing the switch. The first thing is that it must be DC rated, because the power that's coming off your solar panels is direct current, DC. It's not alternating current, and it's really important that you get that right, because the current on a DC system of power is constant all the time. So the switches are constructed differently. In an AC switch, the alternating current is turning on and off very quickly, 50 cycles every second, 50 hertz. So there's a short, brief amount of time when that current's not flowing, which makes the contacts easier to break. But in direct current, that current is flowing constantly. So it's more difficult to break that switch so DC switches are constructed differently to AC switches so that's the first point it must be a DC isolator and then the other point is the rating this particular one is 32 amps and like fuses the switch contacts need to be rated well above the operating conditions of your system the first thing that needs to blow in any electrical circuit is the fuse or circuit breaker. So your cable and your switches all need to be rated above what your fuse rating is for that circuit. In our case, we've got two solar panels. Their maximum current is 10.3 amps each. I've got them wired in parallel. So the maximum current they would produce is 20.6 amps. So this switch is rated for 32 amps. So I've got at least another 50% current carrying capacity through these switches. So I know this is gonna be big enough for what we need. Okay, let's grab the switch out of the box. Now, the reason I get lots of questions about these particular switches is because a lot of the time they don't come with any instructions. There's no wiring diagrams and you just get the switch. People open up the box and go, oh, it's just so confusing. How, how, how do I wire this? So let's just take the cover off here and have a quick look. It's a Phillips screw, number one Phillips screw. go okay so there's the inside of the switch now there's a few things in here that will probably confuse you straight away initially there are eight terminals in here and they're all numbered one three five seven and then two four six eight so immediately that's confusing already because the numbers don't even run in sequence the other thing that they may provide you with are these little copper buzz bars and some of them may already be pre-installed like these ones are. Now this is a four pole switch and what we mean by poles is the number of contacts. So this switch has four sets of contacts in it and they're arranged in such a way, if I remove this, 
you can see that these contacts are slightly staggered in height and they're actually arranged in sort of planes like this. So this one which is the highest is connected to this one which is the highest on this side and then similarly the second one down is actually connected to the second one down here and that's how the switches are arranged they're sort of stacked on top of each other one two three four as you go down and that's the easiest way to tell which switch is which so if we look at the numbers this one on the top here is number seven and the corresponding one on the top here is number eight so now we know that seven and eight these two at the top they're connected together and we can prove this just with a little quick continuity test so I'll take these little mini buzz bars out because we'll talk about those in a second so this being a four pole switch it's got four switches we only need to switch two cables so we only need to use two out of the four switches now at the moment this switch is turned off it was in the off position when we took it out so none of these switches should be connected to each other and we can just check that with a little continuity tester if these switches were made I'd get an audible beep like that so we can place this in number two place this in number one no sound in fact any of the other contacts there's no sound at all so all these switches they're all broken so we know that that's off so let's just put the cover back on quickly actually to make this easier take that out I'll just turn it on that's it just so I can show you a bit easier right okay so now the switch is on so we should have continuity from 7 to 8 we've already established there the highest pair we should also have continuity between 5 and 6 the next ones down and then from 3 to 4 and then from 1 to 2 so the pairs of switches actually go 1 to 2 3 to 4 5 to 6 7 to 8 so that does make it relatively simple so if I put my tester into the contacts of switch number one I should get an audible beep on two there we go and just to prove that it's not connected to any of the other switches no sound there no sound there no sound there so one to two is definitely that switch let's just check three and four put the tester in three we get continuity on four but again nothing in any of the other switches so there we go that just proves that that's how they're wired or that's how they're connected internally so we go one to two we can use three to four five to six or seven to eight and as i say we only need to use two of those switches because we've only got two cables and it really doesn't matter which ones you use you could bring your positive into one and the positive out of two to the charge controller you could bring your negative into three and then the negative out of four into your charge controller and that's it it is relatively straightforward once you have a look at it and if we just have a quick look at the wiring diagram it does confirm that the switches are arranged one to two three to four five to six seven to eight they're the individual switches and in a two pole situation like we've got with just two cables they just used two of the switches and on here they've actually used five to six and seven to eight but it really doesn't matter which pair of switches you use now lastly what are these little copper buzz bars for well that's to change the rating of the switch and to share the load across a couple of switches so what you could do is we now know that one and two and three and four are linked together so what we could do is we could link these switches together and use two switches for one circuit and what that does is half the current is going over each switch 
so effectively it increases the rating of the switch and in this case if you wire it like that with links across one and two and three and four for the positive and links across five and six and seven and eight for the negative and use those links to double these switches up then actually the change is the rating of the switch from 32 amps to 45 amps because you're sharing the load across those switches but we don't need to worry about that that's over complicating it we just need two pole we know that the rating of this switch is well in excess of the current that we're going to be generating so we only need to use one to two and seven to eight or one to two and three to four whichever combination you want and lastly i just want to talk about cable entries now on the box here it gives you some convenient knockouts for a 20 mil plastic gland so you'd push these knockouts out and then what you'd need is a cable gland something like this it's got a back nut on there this is a fixed nut here you'd then push that through the knockout and then you'd wind that nut onto the other side and that would make that nice and secure in that box and then here you'd thread your cable through it's got a rubber oh, this one's actually molded into it normally sometimes they're loose but you'd thread that onto your cable you would put your cable through into your box and then you'd seal that up and what that would do is that would clamp that rubber down onto the cable and it would make it completely waterproof these are meant to be located outside on your solar panels if your solar panels are mounted external so they're completely waterproof but more importantly the regulations state that any openings into these panels need to be sealed so that you can't get anything else in there you know you can't poke a screwdriver in there or a loose bit of wire can't get in there or any foreign objects can't get into your switch gear um, and cause a short circuit so that's why it's quite important to have these cable glands on the, all your cable entries into all your devices just to stop other things getting in there and causing you a problem I've seen quite a few people just punch these knockouts out and then pull their cables through with no glands at all leaving a quite a big open exposed hole some of these plastic edges are also quite sharp when you push these knockouts out so there's a potential for that to cut through your cable as well so it's really important that you use these plastic glands and what I'll do is I'll put some links in the description as I always do links to this particular switch if you're after one of these and links to these particular cable glands if you also want those I'll also pop some links to the uh, simple little electric tester that I was using it's a very handy tool to have for checking continuity on various things when you're doing your installation and also for checking voltages when you're doing some testing so there we go I hope that's helped to demystify the wiring of these switches I know they can look quite complicated when you open them up and you're faced with all those terminals and you don't know where to wire to but I hope that's helped you if there's any other aspect of your electrical wiring or any other aspect of your build that you'd like me to do a video on um, to help you then please do drop me a comment below I'm more than happy to answer any questions that any of you got and I'll try and get back to everybody if I can if you've enjoyed this little helpful video please do give it a thumbs up that really does help the channel and it just remains for me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video cheers